I hope you are ready to listen to me yap because I have a lot of books to talk about today. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you decided to click on this video. I have quite a book haul for you today. I am actually kind of embarrassed because I was like, I haven't done a book haul in a while and I have so many books that I need to share with my audience. And then I was like, actually, Lori, you did one in like mid-June, which isn't that long ago, yet you have accumulated like over 20 books since then. So I don't know about that, but whatever, here we are. So this is a video about books that I've acquired, not necessarily books that I've liked. So I am going to start with a few that are already in the donation slash Pango Books pile. First we have The Villain Edit. If you have watched my last video, I talked about this one. It is about a woman who's an author and her book sales have not been very good even though like her first book did amazing and she just after that it didn't go well. So she decides to go on the Bachelor-esque dating program in order to boost her book sales but she ends up getting The Villain Edit we all know if you've watched anything like that, what that means, but I really didn't like this. I DNF'd it because I thought she was a bitch and I thought she deserved the villain of it. So I had a hard time sympathizing with her or really even feeling anything towards her besides like, you are the problem, ma'am. So I've ar I'm already unhauling this one, but I thought I would still show it. One Italian Summer, I talked about this in the video where I was making my board game, so I'll link that too if you want to see that, but this was just so bad, I hated it. I hated it so much, so again, is being unholed already. And the Faculty Lounge, I did think this was cute, I didn't dislike it, it just wasn't anything that stuck out to me or that I'll ever read again. It's just about um, a school where one day this really, really old teacher dies on the, like, couch in the faculty lounge and kind of just the aftermath of that and just kind of like the goings on at this high school in I don't remember where but I mean it was cute I think if you are a teacher or have worked in a school you would probably think this was really really fun I just have no experience like that so I just I enjoyed it while I read it but it wasn't something that will stick with me now we've got a whole pile of books most of these I haven't read but some of them I have so You'll see as we go. First, we have this really pretty 10th anniversary edition of Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. It is all pink and shiny and I just love it. I have never read this. I have seen so much about it. I have enjoyed Roxane Gay's books and like essays and all of that in the past. So I really think I'm gonna like that. Blood in the Cut by Alejandro Nodars, Nodarse, I'm not sure. But I actually don't know anything about this book. I got it in a giveaway. It's an art copy, but it came out in June. I really don't know much about this book, but hey, I'm I'm always interested. I think it's a thriller-esque book, brims with dangerous energy. It's blurbed by S.A. Cosby, who I love, so that endorsement is enough for me. Plays Well With Others by Sophie Brickman. This is a mommy drama type. I talked about it in my August releases, and yeah, I think this is gonna be right up my alley because I love those. The Haters by Robin Harding. This is one I'm definitely getting to this month. I am so excited about this. It is about an author whose novel is finally published, but then she starts being harassed online. I think there's some stuff to do with influencer culture, which is like my kryptonite. So this will be, I think, I hope, a really, really great book for me. The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. I spoke about this in my previous video. I have gotten about a third of the way through this and I decided to set it down for a little while. It's definitely a me thing. I really am looking forward to getting back to it. I know that I just was not in the mood for this type of book at the time I picked it up. So I'm going to set it aside for a while and definitely will be getting back to it, however. Name Your Price by Holly James. I have enjoyed books by this author. I have also not enjoyed books by this author. So we're going to see how this one goes. This one is about a couple who have a very, very public breakup. They are both kind of like B-list-ish celebrities, a rising actor and the daughter of two celebrities. So, you know, not super, super famous, but definitely, definitely in the public eye. And their big public breakup gets filmed and then they get this offer to go on this reality show called Name Your Price. And in it, they have to live in a house together for a month 
And if they can do it, then they each win a million dollars. So, I mean, it's a romance. We know where it's going, but I think it sounds fun. And Holly James does write really good comedy, so I'm hoping that this one will be a winner. The Third Wife of Faraday House by B.R. Myers. This one I really hadn't heard much about until I got it in the mail from the publisher, William Morrow. Thank you to them. And so this is um, set in... 1816 and it's about a woman named Emmeline who is trying to be married off by her guardian and so she gets married off to this Captain Graves very wealthy man and he has lost two wives already to tragedies and so she's like not super pumped about this whole situation but she ends up moving into his mansion like in a secluded seaside town and finding out that the second Mrs. Graves is actually still alive, but not doing great. So something's up, something weird's going on here at the Faraday house. So yeah, I think that sounds interesting. Maybe not something I would have picked out for myself, but definitely seems like I am intrigued. The Hidden Book by Kirsty Manning. She has written quite a bit of historical fiction. This one sounds really interesting. And I mean, it is about World War II, which I know a lot of historical fiction is, but this one does sound a bit different to me. This is about a Yugoslavian man named Nico who is in a concentration camp, but he is always still trying to like defy the Nazi everything. Like he's not submitted to his fate essentially, which ends up not being his fate because he somehow meets this girl whose father is been like assigned to document all that's going on in the concentration camps and all of that all of the like nazi activity within and so he ends up being able to like kind of make his own version of this and record all of the atrocities of the nazi party in the 40s and so then it skips timelines to the 1980s where his granddaughter finds this and is shocked by what she finds and you know is starting to kind of unravel the mystery of what what happened and what you know from a first-hand perspective I guess I don't know if that makes sense but that was a pretty bad explanation but it sounds really good it sounds like very different than a lot of World War II stories so excited next we have everything glittered by Robin Talley so this is set in prohibition era Washington DC I believe yes and these three girls are trying to figure out what happened to their headmistress, their mentor, and she has just died under suspicious circumstances. And so these three girls are determined to kind of figure it out, but it's like a seedy underworld and whatnot. So yeah, should sounds a little, sounds different. Sounds pretty cool. We'll see. All the Summers in Between by Brooke Leah Foster. So this is set in between two timelines. There is 1967 and 1977. In 1967, these two women, or I guess they're like teenagers or early 20s, they become best, best friends in this beach town. And then one night at the end of the summer, something really tragic happens and they don't speak for 10 years. And then 10 years later, they've lived, you know, their lives a little bit more and they've changed a lot and then one of them gets to the other's house and says like I desperately need your help for something so it sounds really cool I like stories like that I love stories about female friendships so I think that this will be one that I like and I would like to read before the end of the summer the eyes are the best part by Monica Kim I got this solely based on Gabby Reed's review of it she loved this and so I tend to like her horror recommendations a lot so I really hope that I love this too this book is about a Korean family I believe they live in the United States however I haven't started it yet so I can't tell you for sure but that's what I think anyhow there are two daughters and their mother and their father has just left them for a younger woman and or left the mother I should say she starts dating this white man who is just all the things that are bad <laughs> he is like very braggy showy he thinks that the this Korean mom and her two kids are like beneath him but like they he deserves everything from them and he's just the worst and one of the daughters ends up becoming obsessed with like eyeballs <laughs> because in a lot of non-american cultures in a lot of um yeah other cultures uh they do eat the eyeballs of their animals specifically like fish i know my husband's cuban and his mom would always love the um fish eyes <laughs> but 
again, a different cultures, that's like definitely a thing. But anyway, she started to be, starts to become obsessed with it. And it kind of gives like my sister the serial killer vibes where like the the bad guy, but like not really kind of is the protagonist. We've got a morally gray main character. That's what I'm trying to say. I think this is gonna be awesome. I can't wait. This Great Hemisphere by Matteo Ascaripor. This is the same author as Black Buck, so I was really excited to get a copy of this. Although I can't say that I fully understand the premise. I am a little bit um, intimidated by this. It also is quite long, but additionally, I just don't think this is at all the same like vibes as Black Buck. So, I mean, I'm definitely having to adjust my expectations a little bit. This is a little bit more um, sci-fi-esque. So we will see, we will see how this goes, but I know that I love his writing, so I'll probably like this book. The Pairing by Casey McQuiston. This is the author of Red, White, and Royal Blue and One Last Stop. And I am just obsessed with this. Look at how pretty it is. It's got sprayed edges. I did that upside down. I just, I think this is so, so pretty. This is like about two people who were in a relationship and then they ended up breaking up, but they had already like booked this European tour and then they both find out that the vouchers are going to expire. So they're like, well, I'm going to do this European food and wine tour, whatever. And then they end up booking the same one. So it's a romance. It's good. I bet it's going to be cute. And I am, again, just obsessed with this sprayed edges. And I feel like I never get to see sprayed edges books because I don't read fantasy. And so I'm just loving it. <laughs> the Woman Who Lied by Claire Douglas. I honestly don't know anything about this book, but I have read several books by this author and I've loved all of them. She's a British thriller author and they all are really, really good. So I'm definitely going to read this one. Where Are You Echo Blue by... Haley Krischer, I actually have already read this and I really liked it. It was def it was like a missing famous person kind of situation and a reporter who has been obsessed with her since childhood that is like, I'm going to find her. So yeah, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I think I gave it four stars. So happy to have a physical copy though. Pink Glass Houses, the mommy drama of my dreams. And it was also set in Miami, which is fun for me because I used to live there. So it's always fun when you like, no landmarks and stuff within a book and you can like be like oh yeah, i know where that is i know where that is whatever so yeah this was pretty cool i really liked it i already read it obviously so definitely one to pick up if you um haven't i am happy to own a copy i hope this finds you well again another one that i've already read but i loved this so much this is definitely going to be one of my favorites of the year it's like a pretty like simple like office politics sort of situation but it follows this woman who is kind of like grumpy and an oddball at work and she kind of just like hates everybody but then she ends up getting access to everyone's emails <laughs> and so she's like seeing what other people say about her and she's reading like secret like plans of theirs or whatever and um ways to like get ahead in the industry and so she's like well I'm gonna steal all of these and then I will and so it all starts to go according to plan for a while but then people start to get suspicious at the same time she has starts to become friendly reluctantly friendly I should say with an HR guy that has just started at the company I just ugh, I loved it I loved it I loved it and so I roar by Abby DeRay this is a book that I am excited to read for sure I've started it it wasn't like striking the chords I needed it to exactly but I am really looking forward to picking it up again once I'm in the correct mood for it because I know I will love it because it's the sequel to the girl with a louding voice which absolutely love that book. And lastly, one that I am so excited for, it's a super, super early arc of the Griffin Sisters Greatest Hits by Jennifer Weiner. This isn't even like the cover yet. This does not come out until April next year, but I'm so excited to have a copy of it because I, as much as some of her books have not been my cup of tea recently, I can't stop. Like I, every book that she writes, I'm going to read. I don't know when I would stop doing that, like how many books in a row I would have to not like to stop reading them. But really, there's only been two. It's just been the most recent two, so whatever. Um, so this one's a little bit different. It's about two sisters who were like in a pop band together in the early 2000s and then some sort of tragedy broke them apart. And now one of them is living like off the grid and the other is 
like a housewife whose daughter decides she also wants to be a pop star and I don't really know exactly what happens from there, but I am looking forward to reading it and being able to let you know about it before it comes out in April, which is crazy because I can't believe it's just now August and I already have an arc of this book. So I'm so excited. This is from William Marr also. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. So those are a bunch of books that I have acquired in the last month and a half. And I probably, I don't know. I try to get all of them, but I might have missed a couple. I'm just always acquiring more books. And unfortunately, last month was kind of a slow one for me. So I'm accumulating them faster than I can read them. But hopefully we are on the upswing of that. We are doing that no more. We are good to go. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.